Greetings, this is Father Michael. Welcome to the continuation of our series, Behind the Scenes with St. Dominic. As all during the month of August, we look to places in our own St. Dominic's Church which reveal the spirituality of St. Dominic. Now, some of these places are hidden from view, out of the way in a nook, a cranny, a place where the public doesn't normally do. Today, we're looking at a statue which we might say is hidden in plain sight. You don't see it when you enter the church. It's most obvious as you are departing, as you are exiting the church to your right is the simple and yet powerful symbol and statue of our Holy Father, Dhamma. Now we might notice, first of all, that it's simple. In its elegant simplicity, we have St. Dominic holding the scriptures, and we know well that he often carried the Gospel of St. Matthew. But then also, the walking stick, as I have here. And that walking stick symbolizing the great strides as he went out to preach the Gospel, that support he had in bringing the good news alive to people desperate to hear about the grace, the mercy, and the love of God. But why is it only visible when you're exiting the church? That doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Here's the story. Let's go behind the scenes on why this statue is most visible when exiting the church. We have to go all the way back to the very foundations of the order. In fact, 797 years ago, this weekend to be precise, it was a moment that after the foundation of the order, the official recognition from Rome that St. Dominic had established an order of preachers to preach the gospel, the group settled in southern France. And originally there were 16, we might say four more than Jesus needed to begin the church of the 12 disciples and the apostles. But with this original 16, their expectation was that they would set up a kind of house, a priory, a place from which they could preach to the countryside, they could preach to the locals. And yet Dominic had other plans. Six months after the foundation of the order, he did something radical, controversial, and in fact, most of the brothers were dead set against it. He made, and we would say contemporarily, he made a face palm kind of decision in their mind, he said, we're going to go out two by two into all of Europe. And they said, wait, we just got started. Even Jesus took three years with his apostles before he sent them out. And Dominic said, no. Likening it to that great parable of the sower and the seed, he said, seed that has stored up rock. Only seed which is scattered can flourish, thrive, and produce an abundant harvest. And so he told the brothers, I'm sending you two by two from this place in France, a little village called Pruy. And it was on August 15th, 1217. They gathered in the ladies' chapel. Today, it's a little grassy knoll with beautiful flowers and a statue of Mary. And I had the privilege of seeing it myself. To know in this place, Dominic took those original 16 and he sent them forth to preach the gospel without money, with nothing but what was on their back, and a walking stick, a walking stick. There's a great little story, a side note, that shows the communal life in all of its dimension. One of the brothers, very famously, Brother Matthew said, I'm not going unless I get some kind of money for the journey. I can't just rely on begging all the way. And Dominic, in his great mercy, did give a coin. And in the very famous stained glass depiction of the sending forth on August 15th, the feast and solemnity of Our Lady of the Assumption, there is a brother who looks back. He notices Dominic giving this coin to Brother Matthew, and he's got that look of, hey, why did he get a coin? <laughs> a little bit of green uh, around the gills, as it were. It shows the realness and that sense of real life in the order. But the point, Dominic sent me forth. When we come here to St. Dominic's, 
we might think that the goal is simply to come to gather and experience the Lord's presence. And this is true, especially in these days when we cannot very easily or with fulsome ways celebrate as a community. All the more so, we eager and long to be connected. And this is good. And yet equally as important as gathering, as connecting, as experiencing the love and the presence of Christ in sacrament and in spirit, is to take that presence of Christ we receive and to share it with others. Dominic knew well that one of the greatest dangers of the spiritual life is to fail to share the gospel, to fail to give from the blessings we have been received. And so every time we are sent forth from this place, either in liturgy, when we hear the priest say those final words, go forth, you are sent. As we depart from this church, Dominic stands here reminding us that we must go forth with walking stick in hand, with the scriptures, the good news in our hands and in our hearts, to proclaim the gospel, to share the good news, seed that is stored rots. Blessings that are kept simply for ourselves do not bear good harvest. Even the good things that we have, if they are not open to be shared with all, will never flourish. Dominic here is a wonderful reminder, a challenge, an encouragement that as we come to St. Dominic's, we come not in an end in itself, but we come to a place to receive the presence of our Lord Jesus spiritually, sacramentally, and then to be sent forth as Dominic sent those original 16 out to proclaim the gospel to share the good news, to radiate the joy of the gospel, even for us here in the heart of the city. Amen.